Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Ms. Skoken. We're going to be taking a look at section 1.5, Using Formulas in Geometry. Our objective is to be able to apply formulas for perimeter area and circumference, and you can see some of the new vocabulary that we have. Perimeter, area, base, height, diameter, radius, circumference, and pi. I know some of those you're already very familiar with. What I'm going to ask you to do right now is to turn off the video, work on these problems, and turn the video back on when you are ready to check your answers. I'm guessing that you're going to be comfortable with all of these. They are calculator questions. And just remember to round the way it asks you to round. Round to the nearest hundredth. Remember that when you have a number, this is, let's see, the tens, the ones, the tenths, and the hundredths. So this is the place that we are rounding to. And in order to round, we look to the next digit. Zero to four, we stay. And from five to nine, we round up. So turn off the video now and check your answers when you turn it back on. Okay, here are the answers for you to check against. And one of the things that you probably need to be conscious of is you do have a pi key on your calculator. And instead of using 3.14, sometimes you are going to be using the pi key. In these calculations, I have used the pi key, and that's why if you use 3.14, you might have a slightly different answer. Either way, it's okay at this point, as long as you follow order of operations and made sure that if a number was squared, you didn't square the number next to it also, unless you were supposed to because they were inside of parentheses together. Again, as always, if you have questions about this, bring them to class. The next section talks about perimeter, and the perimeter is the distance around a figure or the sum of the lengths of the sides of the figure. So we have a rectangle that is two units long by five units long. And if we want to get the perimeter, we're going to go all the way around. So we're going to add together five plus two plus five plus two. And if we want the air, and that's going to be 14. If we want the area, the area is all the inside. And in order for us to find the area, we're going to multiply the two dimensions. So we have two, dim two units in this direction, five units in this direction. We multiply those together to get 10 square units. Sometimes we might write that as 10 square feet or 10 square meters. In the perimeter and area box, you can see various formulas that we use to come up with either the perimeter or the area. The first one, the one all the way on the left-hand side, is the rectangle, which is just what we were talking about a minute ago. So we can either say it's twice the length and twice the width, or it's twice the sum of the length and width. Using the distributive property, we know that, that those two are equivalent to one another, those two expressions. For area, it's going to be length times width. With a square, the side length is the same for both the length and the width. So when we're calculating the perimeter, we can add the four side lengths together, side plus side plus side plus side, or we know that because they're all the same, we can also use multiplication, four times the side length. For the area, it's going to be the side squared. Again, length times width, but because those are both the side length, the same length for both dimensions, then we can just do side squared. Triangle, for the perimeter, we're going to add the lengths of the three sides together, so A plus B plus C in this case. For finding the area, it's one-half base times height. Another way we can look at that is base times height divided by 2. Here on the next page, we've got three triangles. And we already talked about the perimeter of a triangle. 
we know that the area of a triangle, in order to find the area of a triangle, we need to use that formula 1 half base times height or base times height divided by 2, whichever form you like, they mean the same thing. What this graphic is telling us is that the height and the base are perpendicular to one another. So whatever you choose as your base, it's got to be the perpendicular height that goes along with it. So this height is perpendicular to this base. And you can see with this obtuse triangle, here's the base and the perpendicular doesn't even really feel like it's on the triangle, but that is the perpendicular height that we would need to use. In example number one, what we're gonna be doing is finding the perimeter and the area of these two figures. I feel fairly certain that you're gonna feel comfortable with this, but we're gonna go through these together. In order to find the perimeter, remember that we said we could use either of two forms, and one of the forms was 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. The other form, if you remember, was 2 times the sum of the length plus the width. But here we've got it uh, multiplied through using that distributive property, and we end up with 12 inches plus 8 inches, which is going to give us a grand total for the perimeter of 20 inches. When it comes to the area, the area is length times width, and that means 6 inches times 4 inches, giving us inches times inches, so 24 square inches. With the triangle, we are going to go right around and add up the side lengths. So it's going to be this 11 plus 4, or I'm sorry, x plus 4 plus 5x plus 6. And we are going to add like terms. So x plus 5x is going to give us 6x, and 4 plus 6 is going to give us 10. So we don't actually have a number for the perimeter of our triangle, but we do have an expression, 6x plus 10. Now when it comes to the area, we are going to use that formula, one half times the base times the perpendicular height, or again, we can think of that as base times height divided by two. So it's gotta be the two perpendiculars. So we're gonna use this base and this height. Those are the perpendiculars to one another. So one half times x plus four times six. Now, the rule that we try to follow is always simplify before we multiply, and we know 6 divided by 2 leaves us with 3. Then we can multiply that 3 through to the x plus 4, and, and we end up with the area equal to 3x plus 12 square units. It doesn't tell us what the units are, but we do know it's square units when we have area. So that's finding the area and the perimeter in example one. In example two, it says the queen's quilt block includes 12 blue triangles. The base and the height of each triangle are about four inches. Find the approximate amount of fabric used to make the 12 triangles. Here's a look at the 12 triangles and one giant one of those, it's kind of like a zoomed out version, where we have a base of four and the perpendicular height of four. We need to figure out how much fabric we're going to need to make the 12 triangles. And in order to assess that, we actually need the area for the 12 triangles. So the total area is gonna be equal to 12 times the area of one triangle. And 
the area of one triangle, we can substitute in for that our formula, one half times the base of four inches times the height of four inches. Now we can see because we're multiplying inches and inches, we are going to end up with inches squared. Another thing we need to remember is that we simplify before we multiply. So if we multiply 1 half times 4, that's going to give us 2. 1 half of 4 is 2. That's another way to look at it. And so what we're going to be doing now is multiplying 12 times 2 times 4. That's going to give us 96 square inches, which is what we need to make the 12 blue triangles for the queen's quilt. And we'll move on to example three. In example three, we're looking at finding the circumference and area of a circle. Just a reminder that circumference is the distance around a circle. If that sounds like the idea of perimeter, you're correct. Circumference is the perimeter of a circle. So in this case, we have a problem that says find the circumference and area of a circle. So we want to find the circumference and the area of a circle with radius of 8 centimeters. I'm going to draw the radius in so we can take a look at it. 8 centimeters from the center to the edge of the circle is the radius. We're going to use the pi key on the calculator and we're going to round to the nearest tenth. So let's set up our formula for circumference of a circle. Circumference is equal to 2 times pi times the radius of the circle. So that's 2 times pi. Remember, we're going to use our pi key and the radius of 8 centimeters. When we multiply that through using the pi key and we're rounding to the nearest tenth, we end up with 50.3 centimeters. Next we're going to find the area. And the area is going to be in square units, pi, uh, pi r squared, and we're going to again plug in our radius, so pi times 8 centimeters squared. Remember we're not squaring the pi just the 8. So that's the same as pi times 64 square centimeters. And we're going to end up with 201.1 square centimeters. One of the things that does make it easier to make sure you always remember that perimeter is in linear units and area is in square units is by putting the units into your calculation. Now this concludes the lesson and it's time to work on practice problems. Use all those skills we have just learned. See you in class.